Hey everyone, um, am I audible to everyone? Cool. Um, hello everyone, welcome to my talk. Today I'll be chatting a little bit about testing Kubernetes end-to-end um, -end on your bespoke cloud platforms. So, uh, do you want to test Kubernetes end-to-end -end on your cloud? Also curious to know how other projects in the Kubernetes ecosystem do this. If so, you'll love this Kube test session. Uh, let me tell you a bit about myself. My name is Priyanka Sagu. Um, I work at VMware as a member of technical staff three. Currently, um, I'm one of the release lead shadows for the ongoing Kubernetes 1.26 cycle. Um, was an enhancements lead for the Kubernetes 1.25 and have been on the release team since 23. Um, I'm also one of the three technical lead shadows for the special interest group contributor experience uh, in Kubernetes project. Um, go by P. Sagu on Kubernetes Slack, and I sporadically use Twitter, but that's my Twitter, ha Twitter handle up there, underscore P. Sagu. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about what is kube test you now? So, kube test two is a framework for deploying Kubernetes clusters and running end-to-end -end tests against them. So, it's a testing framework maintained by the Kubernetes Special Interest Group, testing or we call it SIG testing, for launching and running end-to-end -end tests on Kubernetes. Um, it's intended to be the next significant iteration of kube test, which we'll talk about in a minute. So, effectively. KubeTest2 manages three things. It manages cluster configuration, that is test cluster deployment, end-to-end -end testing and log collection, that is running the end-to-end -end tests against a newly deployed test cluster, and collecting logs as we as the tests run through, and eventually test environment disposal, that is the cluster decommission or release of other test resources once the tests are finished. Kube test 2 uses a binary plugin mechanism for detect, detecting plugin deployers and testers. The binary plugin mechanism is very widely used across the Kubernetes project. Uh, the canonical example is kubectl. So the way it works is um, there are three binaries in Kube test 2, and we uh, the binaries are named in a particular standardized format. So in this case. Um, any binary with the name kubetest2 hyphen, your deployer name would be used for the deployer binary. Um, any binary with the name kubetest2 hyphen tester hyphen your tester name would be used for a kubetest2 tester binary. And just kubetest2 is the uh, binary for the framework itself that receives flags and arguments to discover and work deployers and testers in your system path. Um, so, what exactly is a deployer and what is a tester? So kubetest2 deployer is responsible for the test cluster lifecycle. That is the deployment of the test cluster all through its decommission, uh, locally or on different cloud providers. And kubetest2 tester is responsible for running end-to-end -end tests against those uh, clusters that are deployed by deployers. A typical uh, workflow is broken down into multiple phases. So kube test 2 uh, we start with build, uh, go through up, test, and down. Now build is the optional phase. Uh, build by kube test 2 build phase means uh, here we build the Kubernetes artifacts from the source code. Uh, up is again building up the test cluster. Uh, test is where we actually do run the test suites against our, uh, against our newly deployed test cluster and down is decommissioning the cluster once the test cycle, uh, test um, flow is done. Now, this is the command line invocation, uh, how you'll use kube test2. So we use it as kube test2, followed by deploy name, followed by uh, flags for up, down, and test. Uh, the flag for test follows the name of the tester uh, and the test arguments. So one of the examples we can take here is for um, if you want to run upstream CNCF Kubernetes test against a GKE cluster, this is how you'll do it. Uh, so GKE uh, is the, the name of the deployer. Um, 
so the f uh, flags up down says uh, that we want to deploy a cluster a gke cluster um, and then we want to use ginkgo which is a tester to run the conformance test uh, so the focus regex says go and look for any pattern that says conformance on the test suite. Uh, and then once uh, we are done with running our test, then down flag will bring down that cluster. So like we just learned in a, in a while back that kube test is the next significant iteration for kube test. Why that iteration was required? So kube, kube test one, uh, or I'm just calling it here as kube test version one, is a framework that Kubernetes project currently uses even for uh, continuous integration testing or CI and runs about like thousands of jobs daily. Um, it comprises of a single binary encompassing all different test environments and scenarios used in the Kubernetes CI. And it evolved organically from a bunch of legacy script uh, to the point that it has now become unmaintainable. Which is why uh, one of the primary goals um, for, of why kubetest2 was created is to move away from legacy dependencies and to build something that is easier and um, extensible and pluggable. So um, the community uh, supported the progression and kubetest2 was deprecated in favor, uh, kubetest was deprecated in favor of kubetest2 on July 14, 2020 and was placed in maintenance mode. It also allowed reinstanting community com contributions to the tool because it has become so complex that uh, people were not able to follow through the code and um, they were not able to contribute back to the tool itself. So yeah, it helped, it allowed uh, reinstanting th those community contributions as well. So uh, overall, the in intent behind this new design of kube test 2 is to minimize coupling between deployers and testers. Um, to encourage implementation of new deployers and testers out of three. So we have, um, I think, three or four deployers that come right away from the upstream kube test 2 project, but there are a lot of out of tree implementations as well. Uh, and we'll talk about how to write your own deployer later in the talk. And uh, lastly, to keep the dependencies and surface area of kube test 2 small. So, uh, how the upstream Kubernetes project integrates uh, kubetest2 with Prow. Now, for just, just a brief, uh, Prow is the uh, Kubernetes CI system, CI CD system, uh, which is used for GitHub automation and provides a chat ops flavor of uh, 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 way of triggering uh, automation. So something like slash foo style commands. So let's try to uh, see how the upstream project does it with Prow. So user starts with a GitHub PR on one of the Kubernetes project repos. Um, they add a comment on their PR, something like test all. I don't know if it's visible. Um, and the comment will trigger the Prow or the Kubernetes CI CD uh, base pipeline. In the, in the Kubernetes, Test infrastructure. So Prow is a Kubernetes-based CI/CD pipeline. That means Prow runs inside a Kubernetes cluster, and kubetest2 will also run inside somewhere in the Kubernetes cluster. And where it does, we'll just see. So, in inside the Kubernetes cluster, a Prow job is created. A Prow job is a custom resource, um, and anything in Kubernetes runs inside a port eventually. So there will be a port that will be created for Prow job. It's like any other pipeline. Um, now, inside that uh, prow job, there will be containers. And in this particular case, uh, the image that we are going to use for uh, this particular test will be kubekin. So all the, all the jobs that require uh, testing Kubernetes end-to-end -end will be created uh, through an image called kubekins. And we ship kube test to as part of that image. And not just kube test to other test binaries as well. So once we have the kube test to binary in the port uh, container available, we can use that kube test to binary to create test environments, to run end to end tests, and then to finally clean up test environments. So this is the broad, broader overview of a flow of any job. Um, 
that te that test Kubernetes end to end in, a, in the upstream Kubernetes project. So what are the primary features that kubetest2 provides? Consistent, uh, consistent cluster lifecycle. Um, a typical testing flow of Kubernetes looks like building some binary from the changes that are coming from a PR. So you have raised a PR on, say, Kubernetes, Kubernetes repo. That is, you are adding some new changes to the Kubernetes repo. We'll try to build a new Kubernetes binary out of uh, the source code that is also having your changes. Um, then we'll, using those binaries, um, we'll deploy a new test cluster uh, with that, with those binaries. We'll run some tests against that test cluster and then tear it down. So that's a typical test flow. Uh, in kube test 2 we have, we have standardized and codified the life cycle. Um, that is uh, our up flag, test flag, down flag that does that for us. So up flag will bring up, uh, and the build flag also, sorry. So build will, if, if required, build will build the source code, uh, the binaries from the source code with all the changes that are coming from the PR. Um, up will bring up the cluster with those changes, uh, the binaries created with those changes. Test will run tests against them, and then down will bring down the cluster. So we have, uh, standardized and codified the entire life cycle in kubetest2. Uh, the next thing kubetest2 provides is decoupled de deployer implementation. So Kubernetes comes in many flavors and offerings So uh, for different distros, for different installers and providers. And you would want to run at least test against some of those flavors, right? So kubetest2 provides a way to not only run your test against the different deployers that comes ready, readily shipped with the kubetest2 project, but also allows you to extend the framework to include your own implementation of Kubernetes. So for example, right now, Kubernetes, uh, kubetest2 provides deployer for GKE, GCE kind, uh, but if you want to say, uh, test, use kubetest2 to test, uh, uh, test your Kubernetes on say any cloud, Linode or anything, you can just go and find out how to bring up a cluster in Linode and extend kubetest to do that for you. And we'll try that in the end. Um, one of the key features of kubetest2 that um, improves the Kubernetes developer lifecycle is being able to run CI testing jobs locally and as much as um, reproducible as possible. So as part of the goal of minimizing legacy dependencies, um, kubetest2 provides a unified command line interface to be able to reproduce the system under test in both the CI and the local uh, environments as closely as possible. And lastly, kubetest2 also integrates, uh, integrates seamlessly with other tools that Kubernetes project uses, such as Boscos. Um, Boscos is a tool used for uh, leasing testing environments and dependencies at runtime. Most canonical example being uh, your test requires you to have access to a GCP, a clean GCP project or a clean AWS account, so Boscos will rent, lease you that account for the duration of your test run, and once the test is finished, uh, uh, the down flag will release it uh, to be later on cleaned by the Boscos janitor. So uh, let's go ahead with the demo. Um, so we'll try writing a custom deployer for kubetest so now. Kubetest2, uh, as I mentioned, uh, natively supports GCP, GKE, and kind deployers, but it also enables writing custom deployers out of tree. Um, for this particular uh, demo, um, I'll try to walk through the steps to create a custom Kubetest2 deployer for Azure Cloud. Um, I'll try to provide a code walkthrough um, that will outline the key steps that I had uh, taken uh, to extend the kubetest2 framework and implementing the deployer interface for Azure Cloud. Also, the demo will be a slightly rushed demo because of the time limitation, but the project source code, slides, and demo recording will be available on GitHub. Uh, links in the later slide. So, uh, this is what we need to implement. This is our deployer interf interface, and as part of the demo, we'll need to implement this deployer interface. So, if you want to add a new deployer, uh, all you need to do 
like as a minimal requirement is to implement this uh, deployer interface. For the purpose of uh, this demo, um, I'll try to dip, uh, implement the following methods. So up, down, is up, uh, dump cluster logs, and build is optional. So I'll skip that for this demo purpose. Um, and we'll be calling our new deployer as kube test to AKS. OK. So uh, what I'm doing here is I'm creating a new uh, directory called demo. Um, and I'm cloning my fork of kube test to here. I'm in the root of my uh, kube test to fork. So kube test to uh, at its root have a make file that have multiple make targets um, to install the kube test to binaries um, individually, the deployer and tester binaries, or you could install all of them uh, all together. I'm doing that here by install all. And what it did it is um, it installed all the kube, the, the kube test to framework binary as well as all the deployer and tester binary as well. So you see that it was, um, well, I missed it, but. It will run again, but um, so when you run make install all, um, what it will do is it will look at all the folders that are named in the standardized format kube test to hyphen deployer or so anything with kube test to hyphen say GKE, GCE or kind. Uh, it will treat them as deployers and any any folder uh, in the in the manner kube test to hyphen tester hyphen the name of the tester, it will treat that as tester. So when you run this make install all, um, the kube test to binary will also be built and it will be able to detect the deployers and testers also uh, in the path. So we have uh, these at the moment and we do not see anything, something like AKS at the moment. And what we are trying to do as part of this demo is to add that. So um, what I'm trying to do is I have three uh, remote branches available, and I'm trying to check out into one of my branch, which is a step one. So uh, at this particular step, what we are trying to do is add a wire framework uh, for kubetest2 AKS deployer. So there is already a deployer present in kubetest2 project called uh, no op deployer, which does nothing. Uh, so we are take, taking that code and starting with that. So what I've done is I have created a new folder here uh, called kube test 2 aks and there are uh, everything that is sitting inside noop is there so there is a main.go file and i'm importing um, the deployer that is that you see there at the top uh, we are uh, importing that deployer and we are adding that deployer to the actual app package so now kube test 2 framework will later be able to see this new deployer as well let's also see what's there in that deployer uh, folder. So uh, we just have one uh, Go file there. It's a deployer package itself, and currently it's um, exactly what's there in the NOOP. So I've changed nothing for the sake, but uh, we just wanted to ha wanted the AKS deployer to do something at the moment. So we just copied copy pasted everything that the NOOP uh, deployer had. So uh, yeah, we are at this part. We are implementing the deployer interface. Um, we have up, down, is up, dump, cluster, log, and build there, which are doing nothing at the moment. That's what no op, op uh, deploy does, and we'll try to implement that in the later steps. OK, so once we have added this new folder with name kube test to hyphen or dash AKS, and if we go ahead and run that make install all again, it should be able to see a new deployer now. So that's what we are, we are trying to do now. We have compiled the kube test to binaries again. And since we had a folder by the name kube test to AKS, it was able to now see a new deployer. Um, if we give that. Um, argument to our kube test to binary now. It will be doing something, but it will be doing exactly the no-op thing. That's what we see here. It, it's just showing everything for the kube test to no-op op operator at the moment. So let's 
let's go and enhance it further in the next steps. So um, I'll check out again in my another branch, which is the step two. And at this step, uh, what we'll do is we'll try to add some logic for uh, later on implementing our up and down function. So uh, in even in the upstream Kubernetes project, the GKE deployer and other deployer, what they do is they have uh, a script somewhere sitting, something to bring up a GKE cluster, for example, and then there is another script uh, sitting somewhere to bring down a cluster. But, uh, so we are trying to add something like that here. I've added a folder called scripts here, and I've added two scripts in that folder called kubeup.sh and kubedown.sh. And those scripts just have the logic uh, for bringing up a Azure Kubernetes cluster. Um, so what it, uh, this is this one is a cube app.sh. So what we are doing is um, we are just trying to check whether our container have a AZ binary, a JQ binary. We require some um, some environment variables to give to our uh, to configure our cluster. So there is a VM size if we, we can give it on the uh, on a while invocation or it will take the default values. Um, but there are some required variables as well, uh, environment variables, which is the resource group and the cluster name itself. So uh, it will see if these environment variables are available in the uh, path, or if they are not, then uh, we'll be anyway doing that, uh, adding those environment variables uh, as part of our deployer implementation. So once though it is able to see those uh, environment variables, it will go ahead uh, in line number 20 and create the resource group, and line number 30th onwards, it is creating the Azure Kubernetes cluster. And once the cluster is up, uh, it will try to fetch the cube config for that cluster and save it somewhere on our path so, so that we can interact with the cluster. Now, similarly, we have the cube download SH as well. Uh, again, it will look for AZ and JQ binaries. And the same resource group and cluster name, it requires that to interact with the cluster that we just built. And if it is able to find those uh, values, then it will go ahead and run, use the AZ binary to go ahead and delete our cluster. So this is our simple, very simple logic to bring up a Azure, cl Azure Kubernetes cluster and bring, bring it down. We'll use this script in the further step to implement our up and down function. So uh, this is our final step. So here we are um, just trying to enhance our placeholder deploy.go to actually deploy and um, remove AKS cluster. So now uh, our main.go is ready, our scripts are ready. We'll go and add some more stuff in our deployer file at this deployer folder at this step. So uh, we have added a lot of new stuff in our deployer.go file, uh, which is we have now at this point implemented the up function, down function, and uh, cluster dump and is up. So we'll see that now. You see, um, we have uh, on line number. 37 and 38, uh, we are giving the name to the resource group and cluster name that will be used by the script later on. We have also changed our deployer name at this point. Now it is called AKS. Um, we have deployer struct, which has some va values that will be used later by uh, our up, down, and other functions. So here we have finally uh, implemented our up method for the deployer interface. So what we have done is at line number 84, we are trying to uh, compile the path to our cube up dot sh script, uh, bash script. And down there uh, on line number 91, we are actually running that script. So uh, the cube up dot sh, this file, uh, when ran, it will go ahead and bring up a Azure Kubernetes cluster in the Azure account. And we will also try to check whether uh, whatever uh, that script did, whether it eventually ended up into bringing up a cluster or not. So uh, that's the validation at the end of that. Now, so we are doing some exactly similar for our down step as well. Uh, we are 
trying to compile the path to our cube down .sh script and down there we are running the same script again. That will go ahead and delete the cluster that we had just uh, deployed above. Now, is up. So we are we are doing a very naive assumption here that if there are nodes available, we are our cube CTL binary is able to interact with our cluster and give us some information about nodes. That means there is a cluster running there. So what we are doing here uh, in our is up function is just running kubectl get nodes, giving it the cube config file to our uh, newly deployed cluster. And if it, is, if it gives us something, that means the cluster is up. Uh, we have two other files here as well, common.go and dumplogs.go. Dump logs those are uh, utility files, basically. So uh, we needed these environment variables uh, uh, during our cube up.sh and cube down.sh bash script. So we are setting those environment variables at this point so that the, our deploy.go file can use them um, during the script invocation. So we have the resource group cluster name and the cube config uh, environment variables set at, as part of common.go. And the dump logs, uh, dot go, what it does is um, it has this function called dump cluster logs which creates a log directory, so it, it will create a uh, folder somewhere where we'll store our logs uh, from the time when we are trying to bring up a cluster. Uh, if we are running some tests on it, it will also collect the logs during that test run and also till the cluster decommission. So, um, yeah. And this kubectl dump actually take that dump. So what, what it, again, it, it, it runs a kubectl command. Um, which is kubectl cluster info dump, and it takes the cube config file to our newly deployed cluster. So that's what uh, dump logs dot go does. So uh, with all this in place, now we have our up down uh, build is up uh, methods implemented for our deployer um, new deployer interface. So that means our deployer can bring up a cluster now and bring it down. So we ran the uh, make install all again. Uh, and it will have all those functionality in the newly built cube test to um, AKS binary now. So now if, if we run cube test to AKS at this point, now everything is changed. It is cube test to AKS deploy, no more, no op. And now we can give it the up, down flags as well. So when I give it up and down, it will first bring up a cluster, and then followed by that, it will bring down a cluster. Uh, I'm not doing the testing part at this moment, because you can use the up, down test uh, individually as well. So you see, it it just did the, uh, that one thing only. It just went ahead and executed the cube up.sh script at the moment, and very specifically, that az um, cluster create command. Uh, taking all the values from the environment variables that we had set. So it takes a, a bit of a time, uh, and it entirely depends on what kind of Kubernetes flavor uh, you are trying to build up. So in, in this particular case, it takes a bit of time, but um, for the purpose of demo, I have fast forwarded it. Let's see, but it, it will still take a second here. OK, um, the run is still uh, there, but since the cluster uh, creation started, I'm able to see a new cluster in my Azure Cloud account. Yeah, so it's the same uh, cluster information that we just saw there. Um, and once the cluster creation is done, it will go ahead and take the cube config of that cluster and save it somewhere in, in path, uh, in my local path. So uh, when cube test to ra uh, ran the AKS up and down uh, cluster creation and decommission, uh, so it also cre uh, created this underscore artifacts and underscore runner um, directories where it had all the entire information. Um, 
and the, un under the underscore runner we had the cluster dump that we we had taken as part during the up and down functions and um, so I'm just trying to check whether my cluster was deleted also so just using the AZ um, I need to check that and there is no cluster so yeah that that was a quick demo uh, now that that's not the entire extent of what kube test 2 deployers does which comes shipped with the official kube test 2 uh, project they do a, a lot more secure way of bringing like a better way of bringing up the cluster and bringing down the cluster and do a lot of stuff during the time but this is something to if you if you just want to go ahead and try building a new custom deployer for for kube test 2 for your own kubernetes platform uh, you can start with these like you can have some way to bring up a cluster and some way to bring down a cluster and you can use them to uh, implement your own deployer additionally um, some good news so as of 27 days ago there is also an official out of tree implementation of kube test 2 aks deployer uh, available i've not yet checked it but uh, that is available here Um, yeah, thank you everyone for uh, listening to my talk. Uh, it was my very first time presenting at a conference, so uh, sorry for the hiccups. Uh, I blog at psagu.com, so if you want to just check about uh, other things that I do, you can check there. Um, again, that's my Kubernetes Slack handle and Twitter handle. Uh, so KubeTest2 is part of the Kubernetes project uh, under the testing oriented special interest groups or SIG testing. Um, these are the links to the Kube Test2 project itself and the SIG testing community. Um, and if you want to get involved in SIG testing or maybe in the Kube Test2 project itself, the community is very welcoming. Um, so please feel free to come and say hi on the uh, hash SIG testing in Kubernetes Slack, and we will be very happy to uh, get you started there. Um, yeah, that's all. Thank you, everyone. Um, I had a slide for Q&A, so if anybody have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And if not, uh, you can always find me on Kubernetes Slack. Yeah. Uh, hi, thank you for the presentation. I actually just in the process of understanding KubeTest 2 a little bit more and, and use it, so it was very interesting. Uh, I have. Several questions, and most likely we can talk later. But uh, what about Sonobuoy or Sonobuoy? Like, I know that in later iterations they also integrate Kube Test Two mm -hmm. for some aspects. Like, if I'm starting with a new cluster and I want to do end-to-end -end testing, what to use? Like, go straight with this and implementing a custom deployer, or maybe using Sonobuoy that has some helpers. I think I have seen a little bit like they doing some plugins or something. I know that it's outside a little bit of this, but given that it's VMware, I just, I don't know if I have yeah. more information about it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm not very much aware of Sonoboy. I just know that it's some, um, can you correct me, it's testing tool or security tool, something? Yeah, it essentially runs the conformance test yeah, by default yeah. from Kubernetes. Yeah. But, yeah. So um, I, I think you would want to uh, extend kubetest2 for the tester part. Or, or there are a lot of tests are available for Kube Test 2. We have Ginkgo. Um, there are very specific to the purpose node uh, testers available or um, to run some scalability tests against Kubernetes. So we have tested for that. I think if you want to run, if your focus is on running tests against or using Sonoboy, then it would be extended Kube Test 2 for a tester, a new tester, yeah. And just uh, another quick question. Uh, is it possible to reuse tests that were already created, basically, for Kubernetes? Like, oh, uh, yeah, because the part of running the test itself, uh, like how, how how you actually sort of, you know, uh, get those tests and in order to integrate it with your like custom new uh, binary, basically, that will run the deployers and, and so on. So um, I'll try to repeat the question and uh, try to understand it again, but. 
Uh, are you trying to ask where the, te the upstream Kubernetes tests are written? So if you want to reuse them. Right. Yeah. Let's say that I have custom tests, but I want to also run maybe a suite, uh, a suite of tests that are already implemented in Kubernetes, basically. Yeah. So. Um, So this is where the uh, upstream Kubernetes tests are implemented, and they're invoked at um, so the where kube test two picks them up. Uh, that's that happens in so this is the uh, another repo we have in the upstream Kubernetes project. This is test infrastructure and. Uh, at some point in the uh, talk, I I mentioned about prow jobs that eventually that have that kube test to binary and picks up the test. So uh, you could find those jobs. Uh, defined here, so somewhere in. So uh, just just to cover up, these are all the projects under Kubernetes. So if you want to very specifically go and look at. Uh, how those jobs are written, you can, these are the name of the repos, so Kubernetes will be Kubernetes slash Kubernetes repo, SIGs will be the, uh, you would find all the repos under Kubernetes SIGs under that Kubernetes SIGs and so on. So I'm just trying to look for under Kubernetes. Uh, yeah, if you, like, if you click on any of these, uh, you would be able to find out the jobs uh, um, definition there. So for example, Say which one I should pick up. Say we have this release. Yeah. Or I should. So, so we'll be sort of essentially vendoring those tests, let's say, in your in your own repo that you have kube test to, mm -hmm. I imagine? Uh, so kube test to comes as part of the uh, container image that we use to bring up the prow job port uh, container. Uh, so kube test to comes from the test infrastructure side. And then when you write a uh, kube, uh, let me, I'll just pick up any and I can just quickly uh, do I have some minutes? If not, we can talk later. I think just later. Okay, thank you. Okay, so maybe let's. Yeah, so um, this is one of the jobs that will use Kubekin. So what it will do is, um, for example, you have your test written somewhere in a repo. In this particular case, you have some test defined in your container D, container D repo. So if you give this, uh, Line, from line number one to 26 to your prow CI CD, what it will do is it will create a port uh, using this image, uh, kubekins E2E. Uh, and so your prow job will have the kube test to binary and all other testing information, so all your tester and other stuff. And um, it will also have a fork of container D, container D, or any X, X repo where you, you have defined the test. and. Uh, you can also give from which branches you want to pick up the test from. And yeah, um, and once you have all those things handy, you can go ahead and just do a runner.sh. Uh, runner.sh is part of the kubekins E2E uh, uh, image itself. Uh, and this is, uh, this argument, the dot test slash build sh, it will look in the repo that it just forked above. So if you want to, uh, 
use cube test too for your own repo uh, test like your tests that are sitting in your own repo you would want to write something like this uh, if you are going to use prow then basically here your uh, repo name will come and um, here your test invocation will come yeah. thank you thank you